All right, we're live. If you're here, welcome. Usually takes a little bit. I see five viewers so far. Um, as you come in, feel free to use the chat and just say hi, your name, maybe what company you're calling from. Good morning, Jasmine and Chad. Thanks for being here. Good morning. <laughs> I wondered if I wondered if you were going to acknowledge us or not. I'll do a I'll do a formal intro for you guys in a little bit, but I just want to give it a little bit um, to get people settled in. But um, just to start, oh hey Liz, thanks for joining. Um, so today we're talking about e-commerce readiness, um, a practical guide for manufacturers. So specifically, if e-commerce is something that you've been considering or thinking about. We're kind of talking through all of the different things you might want to think about or prepare before making that leap. Um, hey, Natalie, good to see you. Quote unquote, see you. Um, yeah, keep saying hello, uh, your name and company, so we know who's here. Um, I looked at the registrations and there is a lot of familiar faces. So yeah, feel free to say hi. Um, so without further ado, we can go ahead and get started. I know there's a lot to cover today. Um, so if you just want to hop over to the next slide, Jasmine. All right. So we have Chad and Jasmine. So like I said, a lot of you um, are familiar with us. So I'll just give a brief bio. Chad is part owner of Top Floor and kind of leads our entire website design and development team. Um, so he's in charge of processes, product development, all of that good stuff. Um, and then we have Jasmine, who is our digital project manager, and she is really involved in all website projects, um, your standard websites and also e-commerce projects from start to finish. Um, and she knows a lot about uh, the unexpected and what kind of things you might wanna think about early on to reduce any sort of roadblocks or hiccups along the way. So thank you guys both for being here. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Ann. Yeah, of course. All right, so real quick, our agenda. Um, we're gonna just cover kind of why we're talking about e-commerce, why this is sort of a hot topic right now for many manufacturers, um, some of the benefits of e-commerce, uh, different platforms you might consider when transitioning into e-commerce, how you kind of get started. And this is gonna be really where um, some of those preparedness things come in, You know what you might wanna think about and have ready to go, common challenges and roadblocks along the way. Um, and then we'll do Q and A. So since it's a smaller group today, um, feel free definitely to ask any questions. You can be as detailed as you want. Um, I also might open up the ability to, if I can figure out how, um, allow people to actually join in on the call. So if you're feeling brave and wanna share your face and actually interact with Chad and Jasmine, um, we'll see if we can pull that off at the end during the Q and A. But you're welcome to ask questions throughout. Um, and I'll help kind of facilitate that as well. So that's enough of me talking. I will hand things over to Chad and Jasmine. Yeah. Well, All thank right. you so much. I appreciate it. Um, Chad, do you want to, as the boss, do you want to say any couple words before we get started or let's just dive into it? <laughs> no, I think we can jump right in. I just, I guess that the only thing I'll say is I'm uh, super excited about this topic. You know, I think at, every other at least conversation we're having is centered around some form of e-commerce and certainly a lot of the projects that you're uh, managing right now have e-commerce elements to them so it's definitely a, a hot topic right now and uh, looking forward to it yeah absolutely so really you know as chad mentioned this is a, a popular thing that we're integrating on many of our websites and really the digital space and the digital marketplace is just transforming the way that manufacturers are doing business. And that comes from a couple of different things. So kind of starting off with customer behavior, you know, what are you seeing um, cons consumers and customers tell you? Like, what do they need? What do they want? And really right now we're seeing that it's very common for customers to come onto a website and want to do and have the ability to do that research that information gathering, that education and that learning so they can make that informed decision directly right there and then, and then purchase and check out with that sort of, you know, product or, or equipment or parts or whatever it may be on your website. Um, it's really just another way to engage with your customers, making sure that they are 
um, feeling heard and that their meet their needs are being met. Um, I think that's something that people always want to do, and e-commerce and implementing that is something that will allow you to get you there. And really, we're not seeing any slowness. Like e-commerce is just kind of continuing to grow and to boom um, so much that we're even looking at you know about e-commerce manufacturing sales are going to boost year after year. And we're looking at like $8.1 trillion by 2026, which is not that far off from where we are now. So right. really just kind of listening to what those customers and behaviors, um, what those are and how you can meet those. Yeah, definitely. That That's a really good stat, Jasmine. And I think, uh, which a lot of people don't know, but that's even larger than like B2C and e-commerce. So B2B and e-commerce is definitely uh, here to stay, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so not only are you accommodating for what customers want to hear, but also we have to pay attention to those industry trends, right? And I feel like the word trend or trending is kind of a word that can be off-putting to some sort of businesses, but we want to listen <laughs> to, what, to what is happening. Um, what is the market, market place telling us. And what we're hearing is that that direct to consumer model that manufacturers are adopting and embracing is something that we are seeing in our day to day. Um, mm -hmm. you know, people really just want to not only implement e-commerce for that profit and that increase in revenue, but there are so many other different benefits that we'll get into in a little bit. Um, really in short people are embracing it and they are making it work with um, some traditional sales models so like sales reps and still working with their own distributors and still implementing that e-commerce so kind of a little bit of everything and that e-commerce portion is something that isn't really um isn't really going away i think there's about like 75 percent of like that b2b sales will be solely made through online um, which i don't think any of us are surprised about that yeah, crazy. And then there's, you know, the big ones out there, the the giants like Amazon, Alibaba that are also, you know, ways that are helping facilitate that expansion for manufacturers, especially in international market markets, excuse me. Um, and it's it's just crazy how how fast everything is kind of evolving and growing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And this last point here is just it's what we're seeing in our day to day and it's what we're hearing people come to us, not only to help them with their digital marketing, but also listening to them say, hey, we definitely need to find some way to integrate some sort of e-commerce, whether it's quotes or, you know, full out checkout process. It's something that we're seeing in our day to day. And um, for those you guys might be really familiar with who we are at Top Floor, but if you're not and if this is your first time seeing us, welcome. Um, but at Top Floor, our primary customers are, you know, larger manufacturing companies, um, B2B industrial manufacturing companies that are within like the 5 million to 50 million size range. So really just kind of give you an idea of what we're working with. Um, and that's what we're seeing is people want to add this to their website um, or to their platforms. And I believe about half of the sites that we launched last year had some sort of e-commerce component. And I definitely know that some of the projects that we're working on now are ones that e-commerce would either be implemented as part of it or, you know, down the road in the future. And how can we plan the website for that uh, down the road? So it's what we're yeah. seeing. It's what we're hearing. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. And I, it, over the, it seems like over the last couple of years, it's just been a huge uptick in those conversations, like the projects we're estimating that have some e-commerce element to it. Uh, and like you said, I think half the projects that we're working on right now either have e-commerce built in, something that we're working on, or it's definitely something that uh, our clients told us, hey, we're going to do this in the future. So make sure you keep it in mind as you go about building this version of the website. So yeah, yeah, well, totally agree. A lot to uh, keep in mind as we're working through everything. Um, but as we said, you know, there are some benefits outside of just increased revenue and profits. So let's get into those right now. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, there, like Jasmine mentioned, there's there's a lot of benefits. I mean, obviously, there's the obvious benefits of, you know, going after uh, growth and, and new revenue and all that sort of stuff. But some of the other kind of, you know, quote unquote, hidden benefits of implementing a, a e-commerce platform. Um, you know, first uh, direct access to your, your customers, to your consumers. So, you know, Jasmine touched on that direct to consumer kind of strategy that manufacturers are adopting and 
being able to directly sell to your customers and kind of being able to, you know, uh, bypass those traditional retail channels, you know, you're going to have better customer data collection, you probably higher profit margins in some cases. Um, and also you can manage those relationships better. So you're having direct interaction with those customers, you know, that's going to provide things, valuable insights into kind of their preferences, their behaviors. Uh, and ultimately what you can do then is tailor your products, services, and things to those customers and that feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of the second point here is, uh, you know, market reach. So e-commerce instantly gives you the ability, uh, you know, almost like that ability to reach, uh, cu customers globally. So having that access to a global customer base, um, without the need for a physical presence, uh, you don't need, you know, extensive distribution networks to be able to penetrate new markets or, or new regions. Um, and you can kind of, uh, test those things with, with e-commerce, um, and also, you know, the offers the ability to be able to reach, you know, specific kind of targeted customer segments too. So say there's a new industry you're trying to break into or a new uh, customer persona that you're trying to go after. Um, it's something that you can do very targeted with the ability uh, or with e-commerce and the ability to kind of go after those. Mm -hmm. um, another one that maybe one that uh, a lot of people don't think about is being able to optimize your supply chain. So e-commerce platforms can provide you with that visibility and control over your supply chain. So you can identify, you know, inefficiencies, optimize operations, everything is kind of right there. You can see things and how they flow and you've got data coming back to kind of help you make those business decisions. Um, and it also gives you the ability to change quickly. So, you know, if there are, you're seeing an uptick in orders of a certain product, that sort of stuff, uptick in demand, maybe there's disruptions in supply. You can kind of pull those products from your site um you know modify things showcase things market things more heavily based on market conditions and all of that just data that you're getting back you know that direct like we talked about that direct from consumer data you can utilize that to your benefit and be able to kind of control and pull the levers necessary uh, to make sure that you're profitable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um which kind of flows into the next one which is operational efficiency so integrating e-commerce platforms which we're going to talk about here in a little bit a little bit more detail but integrating those with your back-end systems like your erp you know your crm some of those other um you know back-end office systems that you're using definitely helps streamline your operations so from order processing all the way to fulfillment uh you know everything is talking to each other and that order is kind of flowing seamlessly from department to department from stage to stage until completion um and also, I touched on this earlier, but you know, providing manufacturing leaders with real-time data uh, obviously is going to help you make informed decisions about inventory, you know, production planning, customer service, all those sort of things. Yeah. Uh, the the next point here is uh, innovation. So again, that direct feedback from your customers and being able to kind of fully control uh, and learn from their buying journey as they use your platform. Um, you're going to learn a lot, right? And you're going to be able to innovate and create new products, you know, directly based on that input, you know, directly based on what your customers want, what they need. You're getting that feedback in real time and you can modify products, create new product lines, that sort of stuff based on that. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that we can always improve on, you know, getting out an initial setup and then kind of building from there. If you're not unsure of like what to do about something we're always going to be here. We're always going to be improving and things are always going to be changing. So we'll always be here to like build off of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then last but not least, you know, super important, being able to differentiate yourself from your competition. So uh, no, I mean, no offense by this, but typically our customers and especially those in the kind of industrial B2B manufacturing space are usually late adopters when it comes to to digital. And I'm sure a, a lot of you on the call are, are saying, yeah, no, duh, uh, you know how it goes, right? Um, but uh, there's a lot of opportunity with that. So being able to be the first that implements e-commerce or being, you know, uh, first to kind of the marketplace with that offering, uh, lets you kind of build and enhance your brand directly with those end, end customers and, and sets you apart from your competition. Um, and then beyond just selling products, uh, for kind of that differentiation, you can offer services, you know, subscriptions, digital content, you know, upselling, all kinds of things to help, again, differentiate yourself from the competition and kind of get ahead of them. So those are some, you know, there's more benefits than that, but those are some of the key ones that I think we we uh, are seeing and, and hearing and talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
So before we get into just more of the workshop part of this and kind of giving you some more tangible tools of um, how to get started, you know, I just kind of want to recap of what we've talked about right now. So, you know, hitting on those main points of why e-commerce is important and why we're even having this conversation. So kind of thinking back to that consumer behavior, those industry trends and how you can stay on top of that um, with implementing e-commerce and what that means for your business to reach a, a larger audience, to engage with your customers, to give them the opportunity to give you more feedback in real time and make those adjustments in real time. Um, so kind of thinking about, again, those important things, what we're hearing, customer behavior and industry trends. And of course, um, just covering a couple of those benefits of implementing e-commerce. Um, there's a bunch more, but those were kind of like our top, top ones. Awesome. So moving on to how do you actually get started, which hopefully this checklist will give you some tools to walk away with, um, tangible action items, which is kind of what we always try to do at these workshops, right? Yeah, that I was told that's the goal to give some <laughs> actual things that people can work with. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's get into some of those for sure. Um, so I think we, we broke this checklist down um, into kind of different sections and we're only gonna cover uh, the first kind of half of it. Um, our, our whole focus for this quarter is gonna be on e-commerce and e-commerce for manufacturing companies specifically. So we're gonna have a lot more content around the topic and you're gonna hear me kind of tease some uh, additional things that are coming. But um, for, for today's portion, we're gonna talk through kind of the first four here. Um, so starting with strategic planning um, and kind of the items that go into that. And, and I will say too, uh, you don't have to feverishly write down anything from today. Uh, we are gonna have a, a full checklist uh, available as kind of a takeaway um, to people on the, on the uh, call today. So um, we'll have that as a follow-up as well. Um, so first and foremost, I think identifying the objectives of each department in the company. So really talking to you know, marketing, sales, Definitely the operational people, the people that are placing uh, the orders and actually processing the orders, the shipping department, you know, all down the line, all across the company and starting to put together kind of a what I would call a needs and wants document that all key stakeholders are working on collectively to come up with everything that they think or everything that they know uh, they're going to need within the new e-commerce platform is, is a crucial part of the process. Um, next, what we would recommend is performing some sort of a competitive analysis, you know, get as in depth you want or as, or keep it as high level as you want, but start to identify what your competitors or competitors, excuse me, are offering, um, and look for gaps and opportunities, you know, uh, again, easiest question, are they offering e-commerce? Are they not? Um, what types of products are they offering? Uh, all that sort of stuff and kind of going down the list and, and just really understanding what the competition is doing, um, so that you can do better. Um, Key component, uh, setting up goals. Uh, so SMART goals is popular, you know, the S-M-A-R-T acronym there and, and to try to measure success. So the last thing you want to do is get into any project, but certainly an e-commerce project without kind of outlining what your actual goals are. So those could be everything from, you know, revenue goals to process efficiency goals um, all the way uh, down the line, but making sure that uh, you, you collectively kind of set those goals and you're starting to look at those as you go through the process so that you can look at the return on your investment and make sure it was worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for those goals to change too and, and to add as we go throughout a project because as you go along, you kind of learn different things and it's okay to adjust those. Absolutely. Um, and this is a really important one and one that we're going to touch on a little bit because it's a, a big question and concern that we get from a lot of our uh, clients and prospects that we're talking about e-commerce projects with, but making sure that you inform your, your key distributors and channel partners kind of about your intentions and ultimately your strategies behind this e-commerce initiative that you're uh, embarking on. Um, because the last thing you want to do is surprise them um, with the idea that you're going to be uh, adopting kind of a direct to, to customer model um, and maybe circumventing them or that's how they might feel, right? Um, so involve them early in the planning process, kind of gather their input, address concerns they have, and then incorporate different strategies to kind of maintain that relationship that you have with your distributors. The last thing you want to do um, is disrupt their, you know, your, your current uh, distribution network. So by involving them early and kind of telling them how it benefits them as well. And again, we'll talk more about this later on, but it's important. Um, and then uh, last but not least, uh, researching your target market's needs, you know, their behaviors, their preferences. So 
definitely gather as much historical data you can, as you can uh, on how your customers either use their website or um, you know if you don't have e-commerce now, how they order your products, what are your most profitable product lines, what are your most popular product lines, um, what are those kind of add-on products or consumables that they might be looking to add with different products, um, all that sort of stuff uh, that you, you definitely have available to you and start looking through it. Uh, look for different markets um, that may be underserved by your current distributors. So are there different international markets or maybe niche market segments that your current distribution network isn't serving or isn't serving uh, fully um, that e-commerce might help supplement? Uh, and then definitely survey your existing customer base uh, and website users and start to get a feel for the types of things they're looking for um, in a new platform. You know, how would they want to order products, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then take all that information. Um, and what we like to do then is start to develop your target personas um, and ultimately your user journey map. And Jasmine's got an example here of kind of what that starts to take shape and look like. And again, this is something that's going to be a follow up uh, uh, information for everyone and kind of how we build this. And those of you um, that are clients that have been through this process are, are familiar with kind of how we do this. But essentially, what we're looking to do here is um, look at your different people that are going to be using the website, those target customers, those personas, what it looks like, ultimately how they're going to use the website. So what does that buyer journey look like? And what are the pain points and friction points they're going to come across as they go through that buyer journey? And ultimately, how can you reduce friction and get them from start to finish in whatever that end goal is? In, in this case, what we're talking about today is a, a purchase, right, through your e-commerce website. Um, all right. So that's kind of checklist section number one. And then uh, number two uh, is what we call our, our technical preparation section. So this is where we're going to get into kind of more of the nitty gritty details of setting up an e-commerce website and the things you need to watch out for. So uh, first and foremost, you're going to want to evaluate whether your new platform, kind of how that's going to fit in with your current website, assuming that you have a website, right? Is it something that's going to take the place of the current website? Um, is it going to supplement it or be added on to the current website? Or is maybe something that's going to operate completely separately from the current website and it's going to be kind of a standalone store? Uh, it's a really good time to take a long, hard look at your current website uh, and whether or not you know it's also in need of some, some love, for lack of a better word. Like, does it need to be redesigned and developed? Is your website outdated? It might make sense just to do the whole thing as kind of one project. Uh, or maybe you do have, uh, you know, like your customer facing kind of brochure marketing website is in good shape and maybe it's something you want to add on. Um, at this point, we typically recommend what we call our kind of lead gen audit. Um, and what we do is uh, go through and kind of just basically audit what you have currently and start to understand the current state of things and then ultimately outline some of the options which are available in kind of that decision making process of adding e-commerce. So where do you go from here? Um, and then from there, um, I think a, a really important step, and this is where, again where you can get other departments involved, is starting to audit your current business systems and kind of those operational processes that you have uh, to determine, um, you know, what will the new e-commerce platform need to integrate with? You know, is there an ERP, a CRM? Are there human resource systems that it needs to integrate with? Email platforms, marketing automation, kind of the gamut of all those tools that you use day in and day out. You know, what is this new e-commerce platform going to have to integrate with? What is it going to have to pass information to? All that sort of stuff. And then also looking at your own internal processes, because I can't tell you, and Jasmine can speak to this too, how many projects we run into where the operational side of the business is, well, first it's complex. You know, there's different business rules and things set up to sell the products that our, our customers and clients and prospects sell. And ultimately that is a big driving factor in the type of platform you're going to use in some of the decisions you make. Um, and then last but not least, start to review those e-commerce platform options. So um, compare platforms based on budget, timeline, capabilities, needs, wants, competitors, you know, target market research, kind of all that sort of stuff. Um, and on the next slide, we've got kind of a, a brief overview of some of those platforms that are out there. So there are no shortage of e-commerce platforms in the world. Um, this is probably, you know, one one thousandth of the actual ones that are out there. But just to give you kind of a, a, a real quick feel as to the different um, categories that I would group them in. 
we've got here on the box on the left is what I call our open source e-commerce platforms. So these are platforms where you know, there's initial uh, cost to ha have an agency partner set them up, but ultimately the the software itself is is free and open source and you can use it. Uh, benefits of these types of platforms tend to be uh, more customizable, uh, completely customizable. In fact, you kind of have full control over the design, the functionality, all that sort of stuff. Uh, typically, the route that we would recommend to go if you have those like complex business rules and requirements, uh, you you have a unique buying process or you know things like maybe complex you know dealer or distributor pricing models that you need to incorporate custom shipping logic, certainly product configuration, that sort of stuff. Um, and also if you're looking to integrate with different back office systems, so maybe you've got you know, an ERP and a, a CRM and a, a human resource management uh, tool, and they're all different, right? They're not run by the same, the same company or the same software, and you're looking to integrate with different things, uh, that might be the route you go. Uh, especially if you're looking to do things in a phased approach too, these tend to be ones where you can kind of you know, grow as you go kind of a thing and integrate things as you go. Uh, next up on the right, we have our, our SaaS or our software as a service uh, e-commerce platforms, kind of in loose order from like uh, top to bottom as far as like uh, setting up a quick shop and then enterprise systems. Uh, benefits of these, easy to use, easy to set up, usually a one-stop shop, you know, hosting, updates, all the things are provided by the service provider, certainly in the case of like Shopify and big commerce and Volusion up top there. Uh, they're pretty scalable. They've got predictable pricing. Usually these we recommend or are reserved for less complex business rules. So you're looking to set something up on your own, maybe even quickly. Um, for these, basically what, what it comes down to, you're paying a monthly cost to use the software. They're gonna release new things into the software um, and you're, you're kind of pay as you go. Um, there's usually an annual license with the uh, the more enterprise systems there is toward the bottom. You know, it, those can get pretty pricey too. Um, so like your uh, your Salesforce cloud and your Adobe uh, Commerce cloud, those, I mean, you're talking $20,000 a year to start upwards of 125K a year sometimes for some of them. So just to give you an idea of what those costs look like. Uh, the kind of uh, negatives of these, uh, you're, you're definitely uh, kind of, stuck for lack of a better word like once you're in that platform you're in that platform you're not able to take that website and kind of have it on your own um or or move it uh quickly that sort of stuff and, and again they can be pretty pricey and then last but not least i would call the next category there on the bottom is your more custom enterprise kind of uh ERP type platforms. These are ones where they're going to be very specific in the market or industry. They have a niche that they work in usually, um, or they're tied to a specific ERP. So um, maybe, uh, you know, they're, they're something that gets bolted onto your ERP or maybe your ERP in general is just offering e-commerce as like an add-on service to the, the resource planning kind of thing. Um, Benefits here, uh, they're built specifically to your requirements, your needs of your specific ERP or your market niche. You've got centralized data. As some of the negatives here, um, I feel at least what I've seen in the marketplace, they're still catching up kind of in that area of user experience, SEO and kind of marketing needs tend to be kind of clunky and kind of mimic some of the ERP backend office-y type things um, on the front end. Uh, there's a more rigid connection, so definitely less risk adverse. So if you change your ERP or you know business things change, you might ultimately um, run into some issues there because it is tied directly to your ERP. Um, and and don't get me wrong, like these are good solutions. They've got a lot of resources, but ultimately you are likely tied to that company that built it because it is a custom solution or tied to your ERP. And if you did want to make a change based on like uh, maybe it's a bad fit with the company that actually built it, it could be a nightmare to kind of make that change. So a, a quick overview, <laughs> but again, we'll have more information on kind of platforms and benefits and things uh, throughout the quarter. Um, so talking a little bit about kind of the next item, which would be structure and content. Um, so you wanted to start to think about the structure of, of your new e-commerce platform. We, we call it a site map in, in our jargon, in our world. But essentially all that means is you're starting to organize your products logically with clear categories, subcategories, determining which products will be sown as standalone products, and then which products will be kind of what we would call variable products. So starting to outline that, that would be like 
for instance, a t-shirt that comes in red, blue, and green, large, medium, and small. You might have products that take that shape versus kind of standalone. Uh, and then really what you're wanting to do in this phase is starting to determine that product information that's going to be available on those product detail pages, you know, kind of product category by product category. Um, and Jasmine's got what we kind of put together here typically is our, our site map, um, kind of a wireframe site map. And if we look at uh, like uh, go down a little bit, maybe a detail page here, you can start to see how that takes shape. So we start to look at all of the different things that are going to be included on a product page. So images, videos, you know, is it going to be a something that's offered as true e-commerce with pricing or maybe it's a request for quote product you know product features comparison tables downloads options applications kind of everything you can possibly think of that would be on a product detail page and we start to outline okay what is going to be on this actual product category page and that can change certainly from category to category you know you may have certain downloads for one category and not the other um and uh, we will uh, usually put together kind of a worksheet for our clients. So they go through product category by product category, start to identify those, um, and then start to evaluate their current content. So starting to make a note of, okay, here's the things I know I want on this new equipment page on my new e-commerce website. Here's the things that exist now that are ready for the new platform. Here's the things that exist now, but ultimately they need to be updated or changed or modified for the new, the new platform, new e-commerce website. Um, and then here's content that I know I want, but I don't have it yet. So this is kind of the nice to have stuff that marketing or sales or whoever needs to start working on creating. And then start to think about too, and make note of any product categories or like individual products. This comes up a lot where maybe they require, you know, special treatment, uh, special design. You've got a, a highly customizable product or a new product that you really want to feature that really doesn't fit the mold of the rest of those products. Um, that's something you definitely want to take into consideration and something that you know, whoever you partner with on the project is ultimately going to want to know. Um, all right. And then kind of. Ooh. Chad, you're muted. <laughs> no, I bumped my uh, computer. And <laughs> somehow. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so going on to our uh, next item here, um, operational setup. So this is where we get into kind of the nitty gritty details of actually setting up the website ultimately for uh, e-commerce and, and kind of getting into some of those back end system rules and things. So these are uh, within this checklist kind of portion, you're going to be determining things about uh, how pricing is going to be handled on the new platform. So you gonna have to decide, you know, is there a need for an ERP integration to pull that pricing? Am I going to show MSRP to all users and then maybe require a login and pull that pricing from the ERP? Or maybe you're going to have, you know, customer specific pricing tables. Maybe it's handled as a percentage off list price. All that sort of stuff are things that are going to ultimately have to be figured out. Things that uh, within the checklist, we think you should start figuring out early on. Um, determine how shipping will be handled, certainly, on the new platform. So is there a need for, again, for an ERP integration or maybe a third party shipping platform that you utilize? Uh, where are you going to ship to, right? Are you going to ship to all the colony, the continental U.S., whole U.S., North America, Canada? Uh, what shipping methods are you going to offer, right? So free shipping, flat rate. Um, I know, Jasmine, we, we've had recent projects where uh, people are looking to add freight shipping, right? Which mm -hmm. Yeah, overnight, like two-day ground air. like Yeah, you know, all the different things that you can get through the different shipping providers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, freight shipping. Um, are you going to integrate with your freight shipping provider? Is it something that maybe you're going to have flat rate? Maybe you're going to quote it after the purchase because there isn't an integration available. Are any products going to require special shipping and handling? Um, and then ultimately payment processing, how that's going to be handled. You know, what payment methods are you going to accept? POs, credit cards, ACH, a excuse me, ACH, all that sort of stuff. Um, ultimately, what payment process you're going to provide. So this is one that comes up a lot. Um, whether you're looking for, you know, kind of some of the big ones that are out there and recommendations on it, or typically with our clients, I would say, uh, Jasmine, like most of them have some sort of, a, a current payment provider or bank they're working with and they want to integrate with that. Right. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Um, and so those things are, are all things you're going to have to start thinking about, you know, are you going to offer Apple, Google pay, buy now, pay later type stuff, which has become really popular. Um, I don't get that. I, 
but it has. Um, it, <laughs> Tell us how you feel, Jay. I know. Well, I think I think the three of us have talked about that before. I can't imagine all of a sudden paying, you know, for a, I've got a hundred dollar clothing item that I want. I'm going to pay it off monthly for the next year. It just seems strange to me, but it, it's out there and a lot of people utilize it. So mm -hmm. uh, taxes is another thing. And then ultimately how orders are going to be processed and fulfilled. So is there going to be an integration again with your ERP system? Are your customer uh, service or order fulfillment people are they just going to key those orders into the erp all that sort of stuff and then the end goal at the end of all of this is to put together what we call like a product import spreadsheet um it's this big uh kind of giant spreadsheet hopefully organized and inaccurate but eventually you're putting together the product categories the titles the pricing categories of pricing all that sort of stuff your attributes into a, a big giant spreadsheet that you can ultimately import into the new platform. And again, this is something too that uh, later on this quarter, we're going to be kind of sending out a template that people can utilize and take a look at. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then last but not least, uh, again, is just talking about uh, training and customer support. So again, you're going to want to involve the customer service team, the operational teams, those different departments as early on as possible you know far too many times we've seen i would say even we're getting close to launch and all of a sudden there's an operational person that's brought in and they're like whoa 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 wait a minute like this is not how we process orders and we ultimately need uh I, the recent one that came up that i can think of in the last year was like they had forgot that they have tax exempt customers until the very end and it was like okay well we need to worry about that well, that's not something you want to be worrying about the week of launch. Uh, so bring those people on early um, and then ultimately start to think about what are the questions you're going to get from your customers and answer those questions before you get them. I know that sounds kind of weird, but you can already kind of know through testing and through those operational people and customer service reps, they can start to get a feel for what types of things people are going to run into and then try to preemptively answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you kind of lead into our next point here is, you know, talking about those challenges. Uh, what are some common things that we see as we're integrating e-commerce and implementing these complex needs to, you know, to get us to where we want to be, which is implementing that e-commerce. And you kind of touch on this about product data. Um, obviously, that's a lot of work that goes into reviewing your product information. You know, where does that information live? what is the most accurate information you know a lot of times we see product data living in multiple places so like a current website maybe an erp and then maybe a spreadsheet on you know joe's computer on just randomly so like what yeah. what's the source of truth like what could we use or what could you use we use to um pull this information together and uh, that takes time especially if you're looking at products that you have thousands of products or equipments or whatever it may be, um, it's a large undertaking and we'll work together to make sure we get that product spreadsheet correct. So we, so once we import everything, um, fingers crossed, everything is smooth and, and we just have to make some tweaks from there, but that's always a, a challenge that we see. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and similar to, you know, when it comes to revising a, a website or redesigning it, um, a lot of the times we're looking at redesigning, you know, the content overall, and that includes, you know, product literature or resources or sell sheets or brochures or whatever it may be, um, which is great in theory, right? But that takes time. So whether you need to incorporate a designer or if that's something that we're supporting with, um, gathering those resources so they are updated or uh, rebranded usually takes a little bit of time. Um, you know, a lot of times we want to do everything with this website launch, and that totally makes sense, right? From a business standpoint and from budgets and, and having that, but um, that stuff takes time. And as we all know, sometimes those things can just be um, a little bit more time consuming than expected. Um, and same thing goes with that content. That third point here is refreshing that content. Um, there are going to be probably a lot of individuals that want to be involved with that process or that need to be involved with it, um, whether it's you know from marketing, from legal, and that sort of stuff takes time for reviews and approvals and revisions. Um, you know, we'll always be able to help with kind of recommending content or advising on how to best incorporate, you know, keywords into content. But ultimately, we do see that it's an internal process that the team needs to work through with all of their, you know, cross-functional teams. Um, so content, product, accuracy, and making sure that that information is um, usable, hopefully for the new website. 
this fourth point down here is kind of what we talked about with, or what Chad has mentioned with, you know, complex orders, shipping, taxes, ERPs, um, making sure that these, these things work as they need to. And that's usually kind of where we find in QA and testing is, okay, we usually see that new information comes to us kind of last minute that we need to integrate or, um, just, you know, making sure that certain carts work in the way they need to. So for example, if you're selling, you know, parts and accessories that I could just buy great, but I also want to buy this larger equipment and how do I check out with all of that different information that might require different team members to, to handle once it gets shipped off to, to your business. So that's kind of what we see there and similar like QAing and testing that, takes time to review everything on the front end, um, making sure things, buttons work as they need to. But of course, mo most importantly, we wanna make sure that the e-commerce um, functionality works as it needs to. Um, and that of course takes time. So just carving out that time to test everything and you know, we'll give you a guideline and checklist to kind of follow. Um, but ultimately it, it will just kind of be testing until we feel that everything is 100% correct before launching that website. And a big thing that Chad already mentioned, but you know, those internal operations involving the right team members right from the very beginning, um, that way we don't include them too late down the road and, and we have to rework something or we have to add something on that might take the project out of scope, that sort of thing. Um, obviously all of these things happen and we're used to them and we can definitely work with you to you know get through, um, get through it you know, in the most efficient way possible, but just a couple things to be aware of and to keep in mind as uh, as you start thinking about implementing e-commerce and um, what that means for, for your team and for your resources and, and your time and all that good stuff. So just cool. a couple items here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I teased this earlier, but one of the things that we see or one of the things that we hear a lot from our customers uh, when they talk about implementing e-commerce and kind of some of the reservations that they may have is, mm -hmm. you know, how do I implement kind of that direct to, to customer model without disrupting my current distributor network? You know, it's crucial to manage that transition in a way that you don't upset that existing distribution network. And here's just a couple of quick tips. Again, we're going to have uh, some, some longer form content on this topic uh, to kind of dive into it. So I'll just briefly touch on it. But transparency is the biggest one. I think keeping those distributors informed about, you know, your intentions about behind the e-commerce initiative um, and then engaging them. So involve those distributors early in the planning process. Like I mentioned earlier, gather their input, address concerns they have, make them feel a part of the project. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what we see is like people or companies will want to highlight their distributors on their website. So making sure that they're like brought to light, they're not, you know, they're not just pushed off to the side. And I think that's a great way to make them happy and make it clear that you also have these distributors that they work with. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you can also, you know, differentiate channel differentiation. So offer different products or product lines through different channels. So for example, like the e-commerce platform could focus maybe on you know, older models or specific accessories and things while you let the uh, distrib distribution network distributors handle some of the newest models, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, use the e-commerce channel to go after markets that are currently underserved by distributors. So maybe you have a region where um, you don't have a strong distributor, you can kind of implement e-commerce for that region, that sort of stuff, uh, or international markets, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, certainly uh, money talks, right? So compensatory uh, strategies, uh, revenue sharing could be something. Uh, so maybe there's some sort of a model where distributors receive a portion of that online sales revenue, you know, especially for kind of the leads uh, that they send there, or they kind of help acquire. Uh, a lot of times we have uh, built into projects where we kind of try to develop systems where those online inquiries that come through that e-commerce website, maybe it's not a direct sale, but it's like something that takes a, a bigger shape. You know, it's, it's got more questions around it and there needs to be that human element to it, uh, maybe directing those to local distributors. And so saying, you know, we're going to handle these smaller one-stop shop orders where people know what they want. But when it comes to needing help with a bigger system, um, we can route them to you. So you're getting those leads from us. 
working collaboratively on marketing efforts. Uh, so doing different joint promotion, uh, excuse me, promotions with your distrib distributors. So different marketing campaigns, certainly for launching a new e-commerce website, this would be a big one you would want to work on. Uh, different co-branded initiatives, you know, some exclusive deals for distributors, because honestly, they might be using the e-commerce platform themselves. So maybe there's different things you can do there. Uh, and then supporting them with the online tools. So make sure you're providing your distributors with digital tools, content, things that they can use on their own platforms to help kind of enhance their uh, ability to sell your products effectively. Uh, pricing policies can be pretty powerful as well. So maybe on your e-commerce platform, again, you're just showing MSRP and, and your distribution network is kind of handling discounts and that sort of stuff on their own. You know, Maybe they're able to log in and see their discounts and offer that up to their uh, customers that they're sending to the platform, uh, that sort of stuff. And maybe even having special terms that your distributors can use, like, you know, maybe extended payment periods, or, you know, maybe they have exclusive access to, to products, that sort of stuff. Um, and then uh, kind of uh, last but not least here would be kind of sharing in that technology. So offer your, your distributors access to that technology and platform that you're building. Um, so maybe they could uh, you know, build off of it, uh, maybe utilize a copy of what you've done, you know, implement their own e-commerce store, which is going to benefit you in the same way. Um, and then training and support. So provide ongoing support for them. Definitely train them on how to use the platform, make it something that they want to use and know how to use to help uh, not only with their own ordering, but their customers order as well. I think that might take us to kind of um, talking about some key takeaways from this discussion. Hopefully you have some things popped up in your brain, like I need to keep that in mind, but really is um, kind of going back to, you know, how we started this conversation is understanding what your customers need, um, how can you accommodate for that, and what sort of questions can you anticipate from them if you were to implement e-commerce, um, you know, asking, you know, the right questions right off the bat from your internal team, assemble that team, you know, make sure those departments and teams are involved, like we talked about. Um, but also, you know, most importantly, you know, outlining those goals, um, what are realistic goals, what are some goals for, you know, the first couple months, years, etc. What's your five year plan, right? Everyone loves that question. Um, and then of course, you know, we want to give you the checklist to kind of give you something to start off with and do some key, uh, you know, actionable items, that's always important, which we'll follow up with, I believe, afterwards. Um, but any other um, thoughts or anything that kind of stood out to you, Chad, that you want to reiterate? No, I think uh, I think that's a good recap. Uh, we obviously covered a lot, so. Yeah, so. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, feel free to chime in with any questions that you have. Um, I know we typically go to like 45 minutes, but there is a lot that needed to be covered, I think, with this. So um, if you can stay and have questions, please feel free to put those in the chat. Um, and then actually, if you want to go to I think the next slide, Jasmine, mm -hmm. maybe one more after this while we wait to see if anyone has questions. A couple of other things to note. Um, for our events, as Chad mentioned, our whole quarter two is going to be really focused around e-commerce. So we'll be building on this topic through different content formats. Um, but we will have um, an in-person roundtable on Wednesday, May 15th, how to leverage AI to market your business. Um, Chad and Jasmine will also be speaking at that event. So you'll get to see them again. Um, highly encourage you attend that if you do want to kind of interact or ask, you know, specific questions that you might have about any projects you're thinking about. Um, and then we'll have another workshop in June related to e-commerce, kind of about um, some of the topics we covered today, but then also marketing basics. So shopping ads, things like that. Um, and then let me just see here. The menu, oh, the round table is May 22nd, sorry. Um, How to leverage AI to market your business is a positive polarity event that um, is happening May 15th. So encourage you to come to that one, which is unrelated to e-commerce. That's just AI. So yeah, that's all we have. <laughs> you there. can probably relate the two, right? And <laughs> yeah, the, and it the, all uh, tied together. Round table is a new venue, right? Ex yes. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. New venue, the Brookfield Conference Center. So if you've attended before, make sure to note, don't go to the New Berlin Hills. <laughs> 
Yes, we're not there anymore. <laughs> Um, yeah, I had not seen any questions come through, um, but did anyone want to be brave and like join on and interact with us? If you do, just say, hi, I'd like to join. <laughs> and I think I, I think I figured out how to do that. So everyone is still digesting all the acronyms yeah. we, we, throw, we threw there. Yes, there's a, a lot, lot of... It's a lot. I was actually thinking as you guys were talking about how I'm really grateful Top Floor does not have like a physical product to sell because yeah, right. <laughs> it's just, like it's overwhelming for sure. And um, there's not many questions coming in, but it. And if you don't no have questions, questions. <laughs> if you don't have any questions yeah. right now, but you're just digesting, obviously uh, you can find me or Jasmine and get a hold of us uh, on LinkedIn or shoot us an email if you are a current customer and have our email address or follow up uh, to the slides when they get sent out with any questions and can always answer questions and happy to jump on a call and talk through anything as well if e-commerce is something you are considering. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, and yeah, that's all we have. Thanks for joining. All right. Thanks, Thanks Ann. Thanks, Bye. Jasmine. Yeah, Bye. thank you. Bye.